All right, I've already recorded this several times and I'm trying to keep it under five minutes, but there's just so much to talk about with this cool car. So bear with me. This is a 1997 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme SL trim package, uh, two door, not sure on the color. It is a, you know, forest green. But when I ran the VIN number on it, I found out it's one of the last 2000 Cutlasses ever made. Halfway through the year in 97, they, GM decided they're gonna hand over their tiny little compact Malibu to Oldsmobile and say, put the Cutlass badge on this, change a few little things on it. That's not a true Cutlass. This is. Um, two door, flared taillights. I mean, I'll get through it for you. Let's just check out the fact that this is a 25 year old vehicle with no rust. I mean, minimal. Minimal rust on it in Buffalo. Still see all the paint. That's unheard of. It's been oiled and it was kept in a garage by a little old lady. Okay. Let's keep going here. You got these cool door handles. I owned a black 1995 Cutlass with a red interior in it. So you obviously know big softy me, sentimentalist. That's why I bought this. No sound when you open the doors, no slop in the door. No rust on the pinch welds. Bomb ass uh, sound system in these things, by the way. All this glass means you have zero blind spots. It was one of the best things I ever drove. Big back seats in there. Got some stories from high school I will not share. Ha ha ha. Okay. Plenty of room. Got the curved styling here, which was kind of rare for the 90s, okay? Unless you're in a Corvette or a Mustang or something, right? Here, I'll show you how sentimental I am. Eight years I had my hand on this in my 95. It's not for sale with the vehicle. I just, uh, boy, I miss her. So, everything works. James you have, turn the radio down a little bit. You need an ABS sensor, okay? Little sensor, no big deal. That's your seatbelt light. Um, here's your controls. Right now I have it on, I'll tell you what, I'll pop the hood. This, this is just a regular little carpet I threw in here to protect it. You can tell I care about this thing, okay? It smells like the 90s in there, by the way. Power mirrors, power everything. Right now you have the your running lights with your fogs. I always like driving like that. But you got your lows and your highs as well. Pop the hood. Try to keep this video short. We're at three minutes, uh, almost three minutes. I just disconnected the light because I didn't want, you know, drain the battery. This thing purrs. Runs perfect. It's the, I think a 3.1 liter, 3100. Um, mine was still purring in my old car when I took it to the junkyard because the rust ate, ate the hell out of it. It was still running great. And I think GM kept using this forever, all the way up through mid 2000s. Uh, it's not the 3.4 liter dual overhead cam engine that likes to grenade itself. But look at, if I were to own this thing and keep it, I would just be taking little, little things off like this and nitpicking you know, getting rid of the little tiny surface rust on it and making it show car -y. But you can tell how freaking great this thing is, right? It's just perfect. You uh, drop it right about that height. And there you go. Obviously, yes, the shocks are still holding up. The wipers, one goes this way, the other goes that way, and then they tuck down in. It's got the flared taillights. And uh, you know, premium wheels. I had the other large aluminum wheels which i actually kind of like more but i guess people like the five spoke i you know i guess i'm just attached to that old car so uh, i really don't think i have anything else to talk about with this vehicle um you know oh gosh let's uh, show you the mileage right real quick probably last thing we talk about only fifty-seven thousand miles so you got a vehicle no rust 57,000 miles on it, 25 years old, in Buffalo. Unheard of. I honestly want to keep it and garage store it. But I got a one and a half year old son and another boy coming in February. So I have to sell her. And uh, the second best vehicle I ever owned there, she is finally coming to an end. And I would like to sell this one. Junk her and go find another, maybe an XJ Cherokee in Virginia or something like that. If you got a really nice Cherokee in this kind of condition, 
maybe we can talk a trade plus some cash for you know we'll, we'll figure it out but uh anyway this just want to say real caveat caveat real, real quick this is not if you're interested in selling this or buying this for me to give to your daughter or son as their first car so they can wreck it don't contact me if you're interested in buying this to put it out on the road and drive it in the salt in the winter and then take it to the junkyard in five six years don't contact me this is i've never driven it in the winter in three or four years of owning it it goes to the end of this driveway and back to keep the brakes free and i run it and during the summer it only goes around the block and comes back i do not take this thing out to get chipped up banged up salt sprayed on it so um i care about this car and i'd like to sell it to somebody who will understand this thing has survived 25 years in buffalo there's not many of them out there. They always they always want the convertibles. And really, it's honestly, I don't get it. The convertibles, they got that crappy top on it that always gets leaks and damaged. I think the hard top's way sexier. So how many of these are really out there like this? I have never found one like this. And I've searched all over the US. So this is gonna go to somebody who's gonna keep it preserved. And that is my only condition upon selling it. So if you're interested, we're looking at like 57.50 as of uh, January 2023, 5,750 bucks. Not really, not really willing to, to move that much on it. So if you're interested, contact me. We'll see what we can do.